But when you hear HBCU professors, civil rights organizations, entertainers, artists, politicians, pundits, the people I call the aristocracy, <laughs> when you hear them all saying the same thing, when, when the centerpiece for Black family formation, for the Black left, for the aristocracy, the five Ps, the politicians, the pundits, the professors, the performers, and the preachers, when their centerpiece for Black family formation is more abortion and less mm-hmm. marriage, oh yeah, you got a problem. Wow. You got a big that, problem. That's, whew. I, I, I got to chew on that. First, that's that's a new word for me. A- mm-hmm. Afrostocracy? Afrostocracy. Got it. Kind of like the ganocracy, but the afrostocracy. So these are right. the elites of the correct the aristocracy, right, 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 right. right the community, right. the gatekeepers, so so to speak. So correct. With that said, one of those P's were what that you mentioned was the pastor. So mm-hmm. I would argue that cowardice in the pulpit has contributed to a lot of this. You have. So I may I might need to might need to skip down because we're already here now. So mm-hmm. I have a theory, right? So I have a theory, but I, okay. I want to know from you, can you point to a period in time where you believe the black Christian church took a nosedive headfirst into these debased and immoral positions? Like, can you point to either one event or one moment in history that you would say? this is when it happened or would you argue it was like a slow drift that's a great question right i'm i'm not as uh historically astute as my brother virgil right i know he's doing his he got his four-part series on the civil rights movement Mm -hmm. um so so for instance I, i think there are a lot of questions and and issues that people can raise about dr king's theology Right. Totally legitimate, right? Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the type of wholesale embrace publicly right. of pos- policy positions that are in direct contradiction to the scripture, mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of this was amplified. I'm not saying it started, mm-hmm. but um, when President Obama was in office, because there was a lot of cultural pressure right. to move as he moved and right. as and you remember when he first came into office he was not pro you know same-sex mm-hmm. mirage nope um he got to that place a, a little bit later because mm-hmm. the current president who was his vice president at the time got out in front of him and basically pushed him right to do that but i i, th- I think actually it's not just obama i think it's the last two presidents mm-hmm. i think um obama was the carrot so it was we got to support our, our first black president. Right. You know, um, we we he he he's the person who drew that straight line from um, Seneca women's rights to Selma civil rights to mm-hmm. Stonewall so called gay rights. He right. drew that straight straight line in his second inauguration speech. He did. So I think a lot of people started to to move a little bit more to the left when he was in office, and then when Trump came in office, mm. that was the stick. Because now, as a particularly as a black Christian, a black pastor, the last thing you want to be seen as is a person who's in league with white supremacists. And the quickest way to get you tarred as a as a white supremacist sympathizer, or now, right? You know, according to the Jamar Tisbees of the world, a Christian, a white Christian nationalist, is to to be in support of Trump in some way, shape, or form. Right. And I think. Those two things combined help speed up the process mm. in which a subset of Black churches and Black pastors, and particularly ones that see their primary responsibility as sort of um, driving socio-political movements, those pastors, the pastors that see the greatest form of bondage being um, social inequality, uh, you know, wealth inequality, so on and so on and so forth. Those are the people that I think got moved quickest mm. to the left between 2008 and, and 2020. That's interesting. I didn't even, I didn't expect you to say that. I didn't. Um, so here's my theory. I actually, I had three, not two, three, eh, maybe three. So I, I said that 
when the I felt like when the black church veered away from the sufficiency of scripture and adopted a more emotional man centered view, it was more of I feel rather than it is written. Right. We saw Mm -hmm. that drift kind of start to happen in the 90s with the the rise of the prosperity mm-hmm. movement yeah. and the name and yeah. claim it. And then I also mm-hmm. noted that when we abandoned scripture as the final authority and instead embraced black liberation theology and its heretical roots. Mm-hmm. So that finds its foundation in black liberation theology, you guys, if you don't know, originated on July 31st, 1966. So this is after the assassination of Dr. King, you've got these 51 black pastors bought a full page ad in the New York Times and demanded a more aggressive approach to, listen to this, eradicating racism. Now, mm-hmm. when I read that, I was like, wait a minute. 51 black pastors took out an ad for more aggressive measures to eradicate a sin problem. I I was just like, Mm. um, I was just trying to, for me, when I hear the term pastor, I'm like, okay, this is someone who's trained in the scriptures, should understand the depravity of man and the sinfulness of our hearts, should understand partiality on the basis of ethnicity. They should know that these are sin issues and that you can't eradicate, Mm. you can't eradicate racism no more than you can eradicate fornication or Adultery. So that was the first thing that I was like, oh, that's where it went wrong. Then it Mm -hmm. says they echoed the demands of the black power movement, but the new crusade found its source in uh, its source of inspiration in the Bible. So remember, I mentioned that the one theory I had was the abandonment of biblical uh, scripture being sufficient and Mm -hmm. having biblical orthodoxy. The fact that they could run to the scriptures and out of context, right, and make a a whole hermeneutical leap to think that the gospel was really about liberating people from poverty and from their oppressors. I was just like, well, see, if, if they were heterodox, I mean, orthodox, they would know that that is not what. Jesus's ministry was about it all. But if you listen to the likes of a Raphael Warnock or a Jamal Bryant, th- this is what they preach. They actually, they don't preach the gospel of Christ, which is repentance from sin. And he yeah. is the savior of the world. They are literally preaching this social advancement by way of freeing us from this, the oppressions from this present evil age. I, I thought that was really weird. Do you mm. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely agree with you. I think in terms of um, how, again, that subset of pastors got where they got, it's often going to be the same issue regardless of skin color, right? You abandon the sufficiency of scripture and you begin to rely on your own ways of thinking. I I was speaking more so to what I see as a more recent proximate cause. Because for instance, there are people for as much as I may disagree with him on all manner of things, theologically and personally, um, I did I could not have seen Jamal Bryant um, publicly endorsing abortion in 2006. That's true. It wasn't happening. I, I would have never you know? in a million years, he was just that bold and, and crazy. Yeah, nah, you're right. No. Nah. And, and, and there are other pastors similarly, similarly who are now much more vocal. I saw what's the, the, the guy's name. I think William Murphy. The, yep, he, he's a pastor of sings. Mm-hmm. After after Roe was struck, right? Not he's only rocking was it t-shirts, on the uh, supporting the cause. We, we can get into women. this with the men, but if 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 we have time and if and if you know, we always have um, time. If you feel that's if you feel that that's necessary, but. Um, but but part of it was he he tied abortion to you know quote unquote marriage equality again what I call same sex mirage, mm-hmm. um, and these are things that even those more socially um, liber you know socially inclined liberation preachers were not doing 
prior to Obama getting into office. You could not find, you would have to go find some, you know, like white liberal mainline denomination up in New England. Right, to, to, I mean, Episcopal to do this United type of crazy Church. Right. right, 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 right. They did this stuff. 